Okay, well, uh, back at the MapCAD thing. It's uh, been a while since I made my first attempt at uh, this video. I had all sorts of technical issues. Gotta say, uh, got the license and all that sorted out, but I, I've pretty much given up on Camtasia. They just cannot seem to solve uh, the issues I have with synchronization between the video and the audio. So, uh, we're into a different platform and we'll try to get this thing done. So. Uh, Today we're, we're trying to cover off uh, the symbolic solver, really expand our understanding of the MapCAD environment, open our, our mind to some of the other things that I can do. Now, I'll be the first one to admit to you, I don't use the symbolic solver particularly often. Uh, it, it just, it's not where my workflows normally take us. That being said, on those occasions when I do need it, it is hugely useful and it's great to know that it's there. So we're going to go through the tutorial today. It's not going to be your typical in-depth tutorial, how to get into the nitty gritty, really more of a show and tell. Go through a, a variety of the functions uh, of uh, the MathCAD environment and, and try to, I guess, do a look-see and expose you to a, a, a variety of what the symbolic solver can do for you. It's not a particularly difficult thing to use. Uh, I'm reasonably certain that with uh, you know, just by going through this tutorial, you'll probably be able to, to use it to affect uh, with little uh, further study required. And, and if you do run into something very specific that you're trying to do, a, you know, a quick search on YouTube or, or in one of the, uh, the periodicals or in Google, and, and you'll figure it out real fast. But you won't know what to search for if you don't have a basic understanding of what the options are. So, so I think this will be worth your time. Uh, we'll probably get through it in about eight, nine minutes, 10 minutes. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think it'll be a little bit of fun. Uh, so with that, uh, why don't we uh, jump into it? Okay, so I've already prepared and opened up uh, a MathCAD worksheet, which is gonna uh, just give some structure to the various functions that I want to uh, go through uh, with you today. So uh, the first thing I wanna do is to really just show you some of the power in how it displays things differently uh, than what we're used to using the normal solve. Uh, but before we get into that, let's just see where the symbolic solver operator is. So if we go up to the top here to operators and symbols, of course we have operators uh, right there. We'll do a drop down on it. And as we go down, we're going to look at the definitions and evaluations. Of course, we have the normal uh, definition where you're defining variables. We've used that several times. The evaluation equals sign, uh, which we use all the time. Uh, they used to call this the uh, Boolean uh, equal sign, now called the global definition, which is where we use it most of the time, the, the control equal. And then finally, furthest to the right, we have the symbolic evaluation, which is control period. Uh, and that's the one that we're going to be focusing on uh, today. So that's where you find it. Uh, I'll probably use the, uh, uh, the sh uh, keyboard shortcut uh, most of the times to use it. Uh, I'll try to remind you of it a few times so that you... Uh, uh, really hoist aboard what your options are there. So let's get into it. Symbolic solver. So uh, if we're using fractions, so, so I've already put in one third plus one fifth. Uh, and if we were, I'm going to go over here to the right. If we were to use the normal equal sign, we would get, as you would expect, a decimal uh, answer back out. But perhaps we didn't want that. Maybe we wanted it resolved as um, uh, a fraction. And so in this case, I'm going to use the control period. And that engages the symbolic solver. And you see it provides us a solution in fraction format, uh, which can be very useful to you if that's what you're looking for. And that's what you get. Uh, I, I mean, that's what you, you want out. Uh, um, so, so you have a choice. This is what this is doing. It's empowering you to choose how MathCAD displays information for you. So we're gonna see a very similar uh, behavior when it comes to uh, square roots. So again, I'm gonna do them in reverse order, go over here to the right, I'm gonna hit the traditional equal sign. It's gonna give us a decimal solution. Uh, and then I'm gonna demonstrate with the control period, the other option, which gives us now an answer of four root three as compared to 6.928, numerically identical. Uh, but displayed differently depending on what you're looking for. Uh, so when it comes to constants, it does the same thing. Uh, so as you would expect, if we have pi as a constant, we hit the equal sign, we're going to get some value. And depending on how many digits you're displaying, it will run on forever. Uh, but over here, if we engage 
the um, symbolic solver, we will get it back as a constant. Uh, and that's the same if there was a function there. So say we had three pi, we get three pi back. It, it's not going to do the multiplication working through. Okay, so let's close that. Uh, on to the next section, working with variables. We'll open that and have a look here. So uh, what have we done? So we have two x plus three x. And note that x is not defined uh, at this stage. And so if we were to hit the equal sign, it's going to give us an error because the variable is undefined. Let's not do that. Uh, however, if we wanted to resolve that as a function of the variable x, and we engage the symbolic solver, it will resolve it symbolically uh, in terms of x. And so 2x plus 3x, as you would expect, would give us back an answer of 5x. Now, the one thing to be really conscientious of when you're building a worksheet, because we normally won't just be doing symbolic uh, solutions, uh, we, we mix them with other numerical solutions and everything else, is that if x were to be defined, so in this case we have x is equal to 4, and we look at that same uh, equation, 2x plus 3x, if we were to resolve that with the uh, symbolic solver, control period, even though we're using the symbolic solver, it's going to come back and give us a solution, a numerical solution of 20, because x is defined numerically. And, and so, you know, there is that one thing uh, to be aware of. So th there's a, a way around that. Um, so if we go and we clear x, then that is getting rid of the previous definition of x. And now when we engage the symbolic solver, it, it once more is able to resolve it uh, numerically. Now, the caution there is, is that if you were relying on the value of x uh, from previous calculations and bringing it forward, it's no longer available to you because you've gotten rid of that uh, awareness that the program has to the value of x. So we're going to keep x cleared because as we move on with our symbolic operations, we want it to be cleared because we see that that is going to change how the program uh, displays things for us. So a couple things. So expanding and simplifying. Uh, so here we have uh, two terms, x plus 5 and x minus 3, uh, being multiplied together. And if we want to expand that out, we can go engage our symbolic solver, but rather than leave this box empty, this parameter box empty that we've uh, been basically ignoring up till now, and we decide that we want to expand it, you will see that it controls how the solution is uh, displayed. And in this case, it's expanding out the multiplication and bring it back in terms of x. We can do the reverse. So we have the expanded form uh, down here. I'm going to engage the symbolic solver, only in this case, I'm going to simplify. And it will try to bring it down into the fa original factors that we uh, multiply together to get it. So it's going to simplify it down into its uh, simplest form that it can find. And uh, so those are useful because we're always expanding and simplifying uh, equations. We want to present them in a way that is meaningful. And so that can be a useful tool to have. Close that. Ah, so symbolic operations. I can, let me just scroll up here. Let's get us to the top. So throughout the MathCAD tutorials, we've been trying to use wherever possible the functions and defining things as functions because it can be very uh, powerful to us and, and allow us to have a very simple worksheet um, moving forward. And we can do the same thing here. So what I want to do, so if we go f at x and we multiply it by g at x and you'll note that they are the same two terms that we used in the the previous component and then hit our symbolic solver it is able to multiply them out so the equation definitions is useful not just for you know variables and defined variables with for numerical solutions but we can use it here uh, for functions
uh, define symbolic functions. And let's go that one step further, for, further and say we want to collect that in terms of x, and now we're going to see it in the other form, uh, the, the simplest or the, the expanded form uh, that we had before. So that's another thing we can do. Um, so one more function to, to consider that might be useful for you is to factor something. So here we have uh, a, a equation laid out uh, in like terms or, or in terms of like order. And perhaps what we want to do is to factor that. And so we can, oh, gotta use a control button. And if we choose to factor it, then it will give us the simplest form of the equation and its factors. And that also works for numbers as well. So if I choose a number, 462, and we engage the symbolic solver, and we tell it we want to factor it, and it will come back with the factors for 462, which can be hugely useful because it's, you know, as long as much as it's a concept easy to understand, it's not always quick to, to get those things. So uh, that, that can be useful. So let's close that. Uh, we're getting near the bottom here. We're almost done. Uh, solving equations. Okay, so we're going to use the symbolic solver to solve equations. Okay, so we have uh, our quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c. And we're going to engage the symbolic solver. Only in this case, we're going to solve it in terms of x. And it gives us what we should recognize as the equations for the two roots uh, of the quadratic equation uh, done out there uh, symbolically. Now, one nuance that, may, that, that went unstated, and uh, you might have noticed, you might not have noticed, is that it assumes when you engage solve, that you're solving or that the expression that you're looking at is equal to zero. Okay, it's just a, a quick assumption that, that it does. Uh, now, there are ways to work around it. We'll cover a couple of those, but you should be aware that what you're doing is you're solving it where the expression is equal uh, to zero. So let's see how it varies. So we have uh, down here, we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our coefficients. We're gonna give them a numerical definition. A equals one, B equals five, C equals six. We're going to take our same expression. We're going to engage the symbolic solver. We're going to solve it for x. And lo and behold, it comes back for the numerical values. Because again, in this case, other than x, all of the values are defined. And so it's going to come back with a numerical value. So how do we work around that assumption of it being equal to 0? The uh, Let's just get this here. We'll solve it out. So we know that the solution for this equation is for a negative one when that uh, expression is equal to zero. But what if it doesn't equal to zero? Well, let's say it was equal to so some other number, some other constant, you know, say uh, three or something like that. Um, and, and then obviously we could change the minus 12 to be a different value. Uh, you know, the C term would then, you know, do some algebra, bring the, the terms together, uh, redefine the equation, and we're gonna get a different solution. Okay, but there, there is a way to make this expression equal to something other than zero, other than using algebra to change the coefficients as we have them defined. Uh, and to do that, we're going to engage the global definition uh, equal sign, uh, control equals, to define this expression as equal to some value other than zero before we engage the solver. So let's do that here. I've put my cursor in. We're going to put the control equals for the global definition. Let's make it to some value, in this case, three, which makes these two expressions numerically equal. And when I hit equals, it gets redone, and we see that they are the same. And so we are able to make it solve for um, an equation equal to something other than zero. So just something to, to, to watch and be aware of. Let's close this up. 
And finally, collection coefficients. These are just uh, some housekeeping uh, things uh, that we can do. So in this case, we have a, a, an expression. It's not gathered in uh, like order terms. It, it's just a random bunch of expressions that needs to be simplified. And so if we engage the symbolic solver, uh, by normally 90% of the time, it's gonna give it to you uh, uh, collected anyway on like terms. But if not, you can force it just by putting the, the collect parameter there uh, if it's doing something other than what you want it to do. Uh, and finally, you can also, this is, uh, personally, I find this really useful if you've watched the, the, the matrix uh, tutorial and you, you see the power in uh, vectors uh, in MathCat and everything else. So you have these coefficients, but you want to get them out uh, as a matrix or as a vector. And the easiest way to do that is we're going to use the symbolic solver, only in this case, we're going to go for the coefficients and it's going to bring back a, a, a vector or a matrix uh, with the coefficients in that form. And then that's useful. And if you're not exactly sure how useful that is, go watch the, the matrix uh, um, video and uh, you'll, you'll see how we can use it. And, and so that is pretty much all we did. A little show and tell of a whole bunch of different ways of using the symbolic solver. Uh, I, Like I said at the, at the start, I don't use it a lot. Uh, the number of times that I come in here and use the symbolic solver, um, yeah, half the time I, I have to flip open a book or, or do a quick search to remember what it is that I'm doing. But the important thing is <clears throat> I know what it can do. And so it's very easy for me to go and get the syntax and to, to make it work for me, for me. Um, so I hope that's useful to you. Uh, maybe not right away. Like I say, uh, if they tend to be things that we don't do every day, uh, not as engineers anyway. Uh, but when we do need it, uh, it should speed up your workflows and keep you moving forward. So uh, I hope you uh, find this uh, useful and uh, are able to uh, grow your understanding and awareness of what MathCat can do for you.